those vegan guys. Oh, thank you. Hello. Hi, Bev. <laughs> After some technical issues, we are we are finally chatting. Uh, the lovely Bev is one of our regular subscribers. What part of Wales do you live in, Bev? Uh, I actually live in that part of Wales called Sheffield, but I'm from South Wales, from the Ronda Valleys. I'm from Gavin and Stacey land, hence the funny accent. But I've lived in England <laughs> for over 30 years. Right. So, so well, that's one more part of the country we're covering then. We're trying to, like, uh, if you're interested, by the way, in taking part in this series, do jump on board. Um, because it'd be nice to get some more folk to share their vegan stories. And of course, that's why we're here today. Um, so, Bev, oh, that's better. You just moved to the, the phone and now you're dead centre. Dead centre. Perfect, Milo. Never been accused of that before. <laughs> uh, you've got a really interesting story, haven't you? <clears throat> About kind of the kind of um, consumer you were before you became vegan. Yeah, well, it's um, it goes way back when I was a teenager. I decided to be a vegetarian just to see if I could, and that lasted a few years. But since then, um, so four years ago ish, three and a half, four years ago, I became vegan. But before that, I was a nose to tail eater. I was um, the kind of person who would go along to a uh, a farm or a butcher shop buy meat that would be you know parts of body flesh that was um i could identify which pig i'd already seen it from so i would have fed the pig so it's quite unusual even for you know a carnist a meat eater someone an omnivore to do that um i would take a side of said pig it was usually pig to be honest but it didn't have to be that um i would take a side of it uh sort of 15 kilos of of dead flesh and bone out the ribs, uh, put the ribs to one side, make my own pancetta, um, which is a kind of bacon, if, if people don't know what that is, poncy bacon, as I like to call it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'd make bacon from it, I'd make salamis, chorizo, I'd make uh, face bacon, which is when you actually get the head of a pig and cut out its the, the cheek part. Thin you know, so it's quite gruesome for most meat eaters to even think of that and you know i'd get the reaction of oh that's disgusting how can you eat that and i'm like i you know i know where it comes from i you know if you're going to eat it eat the whole lot mm. um i would eat roadkill uh i'm on the edge of the derbyshire peak district and there's quite a lot of pheasants around this time of year so i'd be going along on my motorbike and there'd be uh, a male pheasant that would obviously just been killed and I'd stick it in my rucksack and bring it home. Uh, rabbits, um, not too keen on rabbit even at the time, but uh, yeah, my, my attitude was if you're going to eat it, you should eat the whole damn thing. Uh, it, do you know, it's, it's a funny thing because, and I'm sure I'll get flack for this, I'm sure I will, um, but it is, that is a form of carnism. Mm that I have more respect for yes. than the people who say, oh, God, I can't eat meat on the bone. Oh, not on the bone. And I'm like, why? Yeah. You, you, you know what it is anyway, so what's the difference? Because there's quite a lot of people who do eat meat but won't even eat it if it looks anything like the animal. Yeah. You know? And uh, eating roadkill, there are people who live that way. Mm -hmm. Aren't you know, particularly in the in the states, in the kind of rural yeah. uh, areas. So what? How? How in the hell <laughs> does one go from 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 that lifestyle to becoming a vegan? What happened? It it is quite a weird one, and it was such a massive change that I am the first person to say I I did not want to be a vegan. I did not want to be. My partner, whose name is the joyous one, or Joy, uh, <laughs> has been vegetarian for since she was about 15. Right. So I've always cooked veggie for her and, and done this, you know. Um, what happened was, it's it's one of those ones that sort of unfolds. So uh, 
if I if I tell you a bit about the history, this is how it happened. So I grew up with a very ill father. He had heart disease. I, I was a, I'm a I'm 20 years younger than my siblings, and that comes into it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, what happened was my dad died when I was in my I don't know, early 30s, long time ago now, of heart disease. So I grew up with a, a dad who had chronic angina and was very ill for all my life with him. So he'd keel over, um, he'd go blue in the lips. He'd, he'd make quite a, quite a show of, you know, putting people sh <laughs> into shocking situations. Um, and he would often look like he was about to die. You know, I grew up with that and that was kind of okay for me, but it would shock quite a lot of other people. So he died of, um, he had a, a triple heart bypass that went wrong, had a massive stroke and eventually died in hospital. Um, it just happens, you know, it's a big yeah. operation. Um, but that stroke was caused by the plaque in his arteries, which was released when they um, did the heart bypass. He never came past the operation. So that was lodged. So what was this? Then my uh, brother, who is 70 this year, so I'm 49 this year. Uh, my brother, a few years ago, about five years ago, got prostate cancer. And I'd already been looking into food. I was, as you might be able to tell, I was really interested in all different kinds of food, you know, foraging and goodness knows what. I've traveled, done lots of things. And I was looking into food. And it's about the time, sort of five or six years ago, when things about the microbiome was coming more into the sort of public for if you were interested in those type of things. So I got interested in that. <clears throat> and I came across this book I'd never heard of called The China Study. Now, most people... Oh, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So most people of, who are not vegan or have not come through these things has never heard of it, and why should they? And I basically sat down and I read the China study. And I thought, ooh. And for those people who don't know, you know, it's, it's massive links uh, between animal protein and the causes of cancer. Yeah. And it's, and it's not any protein. It makes no difference if it's plant protein, but if it's animal protein... That there are loads of um, uh, experiments about it, and goodness knows what, and they, they put the animal protein up and down in the rats, and the more the rats had protein from animal, um, it was casein actually, which is milk uh, protein, for those who don't know that one. Um, and the author of the book, uh, Professor T. Colin Campbell, was able to turn um, cancers on and off in rats just with the difference in protein. So I thought... Just off the top of your head, Beth. Yeah. Do, can you remember how long the China study covers? Well, there's, there's two things. The China study takes on Collins Campbell's, but the, the, China, the, China, the, can, the China Cancer Atlas, I'll put my teeth in, um, <laughs> was was, I believe, oh, I haven't read it for a while, but it's gone from about 1972 through to 1980-something. And it was it was called the Chinese Cancer Atlas. And uh, it was when one of the premiers of China, I think it was the president of China, had was diagnosed with bladder cancer. And he made this dictum to say that um, everybody, you know, we need to cure this. He died. And there was this massive research to uh, pinpoint all the different kinds of cancers that were prevalent in all the different populations of China. It was a massive, massive study that took years. And then T. Colin Campbell went in in the early 80s to the mid 80s, I think. And then he did other things. Now, there are other there are other parts to the China study as well, which include looking into um, there were studies in, in uh, India with rats and turning cancer on and off with protein. So there's been lots of um, refutations of some of the uh, parts of the China study, but, you know, all in all... That's anybody, can, anybody can look it up, can't they? And, and yeah, kind of, uh, I've, I've got it right there. There's a book right there. So take a look at it. Um, there's a, a film as well. I'm sure you know it. It's called Forks Over Knives. Brilliant film. Brilliant. And True. that takes on... Uh, T. Colin Campbell, who's just the loveliest man, and a uh, another uh, doctor who's actually a heart surgeon called um, Esselstyn, and they work sort of side by side, and it's about heart disease. So back to what I was saying is, I read the China study, 
and I, I, you know, digested it quite a bit, thinking there might be something in this. And I'm very much one for responsibility, self-responsibility. And I thought, well, if I've got the genetics and on the other side I've got cancer, not my mum, but everybody else in the family died of cancer. Yeah. I thought, well, the only person who can do anything about this is me. So I thought, kick your ass into gear. And I was very, very resistant. But I said to so the joyous one, um, it's her birthday in uh, September. I said, right, let's do it. Oh, for what date? Uh, 14th. Ah, four days before Jason. That explains a lot. <laughs> He's the 18th September. I'm, I'm a slapdash. She's a perfectionist. Between us, you know. And when, when are you? Yeah. When's June. yours? June. Ah, uh, mine's in May, so. What day in May? Ish. So what star <laughs> sign are you, Bev? I'm, I'm, a, I'm full of bull, I am, yes. I'm a Taurus. I'm a Gemini, as if you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, my, you, can't, you can't actually see it on this, but my gut would tell you that I'm a Taurus. I'm very much that kind of, I don't believe in this, but there's certain bits I just go, oh, yeah, yeah, I am a slouchy homebody, Labrador <laughs> of a person, you know. Uh, so, <laughs> meanwhile, back at the ranch, the cattle were getting <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, my pint of gin. It's not gin. I do not drink gin. <laughs> Excuse me. So, I read these books, thought, right, well, and get your ass together. And um, I was like, right, we'll do this for a month. We'll do whole foods plant based for a month. And that is it. And then I went, oh, fuck it, let's just do it for two weeks. I can't think of doing it for a month because, and it's not because necessarily, I want because I didn't eat much meat, despite the fact that I was making these things. Mm. I was actually one of those grass-fed, I'd gone into, you know, you must be able to see it. You must be able to know it. I did a lot of bushcraft stuff. That's not a euphemism. Um, <laughs> I've, got, I've got a sheath knife to die for and a hammock to boot. Um, but... <laughs> Rewind. You can cut this bit. I can't remember what I was saying. No, we like this bit. This is natural. Yeah. <laughs> you were saying, um, even Wolfie. though you've gone from, yeah. even though you used to make a lot of meat, it wasn't all for you. And first you said a month, then you said, no, two weeks. Yeah, because I, I really, I was getting extremely, this is going to sound like the real poncy arse thing that it sounds like, but I don't mean it like this. Um, I got to be really, really good at cooking. I mean, really good. And I was thinking, mm, I can own go in. that. You own that, girl. Well, I'm I was, brilliant yeah. at cooking. I was considering doing the master chav thing because I thought I'd get to. I would get to the the level I was. I could get to the quarterfinals, no further. But I could on on savoury stuff because you know I could basically take arse end of a cow. Make it, you know, do my own pasta, make it into ravioli, you go, mur, 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 mur. and, you know, presentation would have looked like a dustbin lid had just dropped on it. But, you know, you learn that. <laughs> shit, don't you? So I decided, you know, right, just two weeks. And in that two weeks, I just thought, do you know what? Just put your money where your mouth is and just do it. So in the September, I didn't class myself as vegan. It was whole food plant based. And that was a real distinction. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I thought the whole food plant-based diet that I followed was vegan in its essence, but I wasn't a vegan. I was eating that way and I wasn't, but I wasn't living that way yeah. in, in, you know, not in, cause it's an intentional philosophy, isn't it? You know, it's not, it's not a diet. Um, but what was it, what made me into a V or oh, how I developed into a vegan was, I think, because I was quite conscious of, you know, the need to, look look an animal in the eye anyway if you're going to eat it and you know i'd already moved to if i can't kill it should i eat it i hadn't killed it i've never killed anything apart from a couple of birds that were knocked by a car you know well but not not to eat but it's can i just say it's very yeah. admirable that as a meat eater you were thinking like that because so many people would never think that like no would never question themselves and ask and that's a very valid question really valid so valid to all humans if i couldn't if i can't kill this myself yeah do i have a right to eat it yes i think that's a really important 
thing and it it kind of shows where the where the mindset of veganism can start so yeah, yeah. well and, you know, just on that when i was a teenager i used to work on a cattle and sheep farm you know i've i have delivered not uh, not cows but i've delivered lambs i have dipped sheep that's a lovely thing got very soft hands after that but you stink like a skunk um <laughs> Uh, you know, so I've I've been nose to uh, nose to snout with lambs that I then had for Sunday dinner. You know, but I hadn't killed them, and I think there's a difference there. And you know, I just yeah, it's getting to an age. Um, that doesn't make me a saint. I'm just saying I have I have actually worked on farms. Um, blah, blah, blah. so what happened then? Really, there was there was a parad. So I'd already had a paradigm shift. I loved that word when I came across it. So, you know, for anybody who doesn't really know what it is, it's like where your belief system is, what you believe to be true, like the world is flat or the world is round or the sun goes around the moon or whatever it is. When you suddenly turn around and go, mm, that might not be the case. Mm -hmm. And you start questioning where you are and your whole world view shifts slightly. And that's that's a paradigm shift. And uh, once you start questioning those things, everything else can landslide into it, can't it? You know, what was it like for you coming out? There's not so much a paradigm shift, is it? It's like, oh, thank God for that. But you, you walk around for the first, as soon as you come out going, I'm gay, I'm gay, I'm gay, I'm gay, I'm gay, I'm gay, I'm gay. I'm gay. Oh, look, I'm wearing gay trousers with a gay T-shirt. You know, <laughs> these are my gay hands. And <laughs> that's what happens, well, in my experience, that's what happens when you first come out for the first month or so. I'm eating a gay sandwich in a gay bar from a gay pub, you know, and it's, everything's gay. And then it, but the paradigm for us is different to start with because you've already rejected one set of norms. Um, and I think it can be more difficult if if that paradigm that you're already in is has never been questioned in any way, shape, or form. Mm. And that's not a criticism. I think it's just a, a statement of of sometimes where we are. Absolutely. It's, it can be harder to question, can't it? This is a far deeper conversation than I anticipated. <laughs> uh, I do apologise. I'm absolutely adoring it. Um, it it's, uh, me and Stuart talk like this a lot. We, oh, we, I've been watching him. We, we, we break the world down. And I've spoken to him for an hour and ten minutes this afternoon. <laughs> I, I, I know that by the end of it we put the world to rights and, and had some plans for the vegan queens for the next thing. <laughs> We probably discussed 80 subjects in one, you know, it's just, it, it's... 80 subjects in one call, yeah. <laughs> it's just how our, our brains work. They're always kind of firing in, in different... And obviously, you are very much that kind of person where you, once you're, once you're aware of something, mm -hmm. you want to know... <laughs> All right, what do, what can I know about this? And and so yeah, I just think that's really interesting. Um, uh, and I wish more humans embraced that side of themselves rather than being afraid of change. Mm. Because I think we're all. Um, I think people are inherently afraid of breaking their status quo, what feels normal to them, what feels like right and normal to them. Me and Stuart, I, honestly, I'll let you carry on in a minute, Bev. No, no, <laughs> you carry on, mate. It's a conversation, not a one way. Uh, me and Stuart were talking today about how this whole coronavirus thing <laughs> has given us all, forced us all, really, to kind of step back and, uh, like, I'm really grateful right now i'm grateful for the fact that i'm talking to my friend bev in sheffield i'm grateful for the fact yes. that i have a husband upstairs upstairs and he's still able to work and he's working for the safety of home that i've got a roof that i've got running water yes. food in the cupboards uh, all of these things yeah. that i never necessarily took for granted but have become hugely magnified as massively important to me and my well-being um and i'm i am not glad for this virus i am not glad that this horrific thing is happening to the world yeah the, the side effects of it are that it's made us all stop yeah. sit down take stock of the world and i think now we just need more people to make the link between this 
and animal consumption. Yes, yeah. It's, that, it's so crucially important and it's never been more suddenly. I wrote this on the Facebook page not, not too long ago. Suddenly, we've all been restricted in our movement. Yeah. We've been confined to small spaces yeah. and we, we are no longer fully in control of what we do. We've done that to animals for years and we still exactly that. Yeah. Except the spaces are much smaller that you can't even stand up in them. So I'm, I hope that it gives people a little bit of, ah, okay, you know. Lewis Hamilton, um, I'm, I don't really know much about him, but I know he, he's recently become vegan. He became plant-based then vegan in the last year or two. Yeah. And he's got a massive following on Twitter. I don't, I don't, I don't twat. Um, he's got a massive <laughs> following on Twitter. <laughs> Maybe I do. Um, <laughs> but uh, he, he actually put, you know, you're all feeling like this now. We're all in our own, and said something similar. We're all in our own cages. Imagine what it's like next time you go to a zoo. You know, but he, did, he didn't knock anything else, just said, this yeah. is what, you know, we've got the nicest cages in the world at zoos, but it's still a cage, you know, how yeah. are you feeling now? And I thought, good on you, matey, because, you know, uh, Earth, you haven't Earth and Ed, as well, has said, yes. has said something uh, very similar recently. I think, in fact, if I'm being very honest, it was watching Earth and Ed's video that, that made me like, God, yeah, that's a really good perspective. Yeah. Actually. That's a good um comparison people yeah. can compare now that was a great video that was yeah is it yeah, i gotta love him he's such a lovely bloke yeah such a lovely lovely bloke he is right bonnie bev mm. <laughs> completely <laughs> so go on you, you you how did you approach those two weeks i mean was it, well, it was it everything was it yes. like did you get did you change everything and you had nothing at all? Like yeah. no milk, no butter, no nothing. Yep. So that was a pretty big switch from... We mostly eat, at. We're... <laughs> mostly at vegetarian because Joy's vegetarian. Yeah. Um, anyway, and, um, but eggs are a go-to for anything you know i i used to make some of the best uh, scrambled eggs you've ever had you know like and goodness knows what so i just went completely because i'm a very all or nothing kind of person this might be coming through and if i do something i do it you know when i decide i kind of figure i gave up smoking when i decided to after smoking 30 a day at one point and i went right that's it and i did it and i figure if i can give up smoking because i think that's possibly the hardest thing to give up is smoking yeah. then everything else is a piece of potato water isn't it um and it's that's not that's not i'm amazing for giving up smoking i'm just saying that's one i acknowledge that is one of the hardest things to do absolutely it is yeah so the habit i had to lose my zippo lighter as in i physically lost it and i left it in a pub and i thought that's it because that was part of the uh tradition the routine the it's none of those things What's it called when you the habit? There's a there's a ritual to smoking. Yeah. Which is oh so attractive. But uh, and, and even now after all these years I could I could do it again, so I won't. Um but the and it's the same with the whole food plant based. It was immediate and there was nothing. It was absolutely nothing for those for months. Uh because I just went, sod it, I need to carry on. Um what I did do is the only transition that I did was to add more beans because I'm not stupid. I didn't go from having beans three or four times a week to having full loads of red kidney beans and watching my stomach explode like some hot air balloon in, you know, into space. So it was just adding more um, whole foods to the yeah. diet. But it, it's been right from the start, whole food plant based. Um, and so, yes, and what, what with the paradigm shift, and I think it links back to what you're saying about having this time for us now, that time for reflection. And it was that time of not having the cheese and, you know, forget about the meat because the meat was, I always saw meat, the meat that I was eating because I'd sent to some bloody Dorset farm where they massaged them and, you know, 
call them names and sing them birthdays and you know and humanely slaughter them with you know the sharpest knife and all that shit um i'd gone from that which was expensive um so that was like once a week i might have had it i'm not patting myself on the back for that yeah i'm saying that but you know I'd, so we were mostly eating vegetarian more into that and then because of that complete lack of anything to do with animals anything at all to do with consuming using eating drinking sniffing whatever it is it was almost like it allowed my mind to have space to consider animals as animals to consider that they even though i knew it i'd never thought to, I, I say to people i'd never even thought to think about milk i'd never even considered anything about an egg I'd never considered it. I'd never thought to think about it. And I'm, I was like, well, why do we drink milk? Why do we eat eggs? Whose is it? It's not mine. And that's the, that's the clunk. It's like, it's their bodies. It's their flesh. It's their periods. It's their excretions. It's not mine. How friggin' arrogant do I think, how pompous am I to think that I own, have, dominion over you know other beings they all have lives my stupid thing is not stupid i have not eaten honey for about six years this is how my brain works i looked into i wanted to save the bees all of them in a big safe and i decided that i'd look into having a, a honey hive great and I looked into it and I thought, oh, don't. And I looked into the ones that you did and I looked into this and I looked into that and I looked into how colonies of bees work. And I thought, that is disgusting. How, how dare you? Because bees don't work as individuals. This is why there's all this, my understanding is, which is very small. The, the bees work as a colony. It's like, and it's almost, it, that, I, that euphemism of having a hive mind is actually a true thing. It's real. So when you, you can't gas half the hive, you can't chop the wings off the queen and send her through the bloody post. You can't rape a bee with sperm and then expect it to be fine. You can't shift them around the country because it's, you know, and leave half of them behind because it's like having a whole body of a hive and then chopping someone's arm or leg off and going, go on then, off you go. And there's colony collapse and colony collapse and colony collapse and everything else is going on. So I hadn't eaten. Blah, 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 sorry, I go off on one. I haven't eaten. <laughs> I haven't eaten honey for about six years. Any honey at all? I won't have it in anything. I was still eating a cow. <laughs> I was still eating eggs. I was still eating everything else, but I wouldn't touch honey because I thought, well, that's barbaric. So when the thought came to me, think about milk, think about eggs. It was like, how slow do you have to be, Llewellyn? How utterly slow is your stupid little mind to think about an insect, which is fine. I love insects. I've got tons of books on them. Think, put, put this idea of, you know, an insect thing, but then happily eat Clarence the cow and suck on her boobs. I'll leave that one there. So that, that space that you're, you were talking about just now, about, um, you know, us as in lockdown in this pandemic situation having that space to think about it it's that was the space that plant-based had on me to allow my brain to go do you know what that's it never again and it's that yeah and it's absolutely never again do you did you immediately physically start to feel better i'm asking you this because mm. i'm not saying vegan is a cure-all for anything but no when me and Jason do eat a whole food plant-based meal, we invariably feel better immediately after and right. for, you know, until the next day than we would if we'd eaten a pie or a pastry or still all vegan. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, did you kind of, especially because you didn't uh, go straight for the alternatives, you went for whole food plant-based did you immediately feel it lots of people actually asked me that but I, I i didn't you know i'm very honest with the thing i i didn't loads of people do mm. and i think the the thing is i've all i always cook from scratch anyway i i've always used lots and lots of fresh vegetables i've always done 
excuse me, <clears throat> those things, a lot of it out of necessity because my, you know, it's it's how I learned to cook anyway. My mum, my mum was born before World War Two. You know, she would have been eighty nine, right. a couple of weeks ago. You know, so it was all cooking from scratch. Oh, no what that was? Pardon? Our oh, Margaret. Margaret, yeah. Let's <laughs> give her a shout it. over there. Go, <laughs> Joni, too. <laughs> Mwah, big love to you, Joan. Isn't it? How Welsh can I be? You know, I'll go. I'll go all Welsh just for you, mother. Hello, Joan. How are we doing, love? Nice <laughs> She'll probably watch this later. Hi, <laughs> Bev. She'll wave at the computer. Oh, no. um, so yeah, I didn't. I didn't get that benefit um, because I wasn't. I wasn't eating the. Pro I've never eaten the process. I don't mean I never eat it. I'll have a fish finger sandwich. You know, Ooh. end up me uh, corn fish finger sandwich. Oh, lush stuff. And we do. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not a bloody purist. You know, we do have the, what did we have the other day? I did a whole Linda McCartney sausages breakfast thing with a glass of wine for breakfast, you know. Oh, fuck your way, why not? We're in lockdown. Exactly. You can exactly. do one. I was on holiday. I'm a teacher. I was officially on holiday. Uh, so, <laughs> so, you know, we do have the Linda pies and stuff like that. And last night we had, I uh, can't remember what they are, they're like beefless bits on, on some rice. Um, but, you know, that's, I only allow us to have, something processed about once a fortnight because otherwise i'll just eat that shit well that's, will. Where, that's where we're heading right now right. although we've said we're probably going to do a five two five mm. days of whole food plant-based yeah and a couple of days where we can have a pie or a burger or whatever yeah. uh, last night for the um you know i would mentioned recently i bought some kidney beans brown lentils and green lentils dried Oh, I saw on your Facebook that you'd done that beautiful pie, hadn't you? Oh my yeah. God, it, Bev, it was gorgeous. It, yeah. was, it was proper gorgeous. Yeah. Just a brown lentil base, all flavoured and everything, and a potato, a sweet potato top, shepherd's pie. Mum's got it for her tea tonight. We had it for tea last night and yeah. lunch today, and I feel great. Yeah. And it was delicious. Yeah. You know, just I, I've got to let my pussy out, Bev. Oh. <laughs> Puddy, puddy, pud, pud. <laughs> oh. I feel like I should get the guitar and sing while you're not here. Uh, she just woke up for her afternoon, from her afternoon nap. She goes out in the morning, has a crazy couple of hours running around, lies in the sun, burns her ears, comes in, moans, and then goes to bed. And sees the wonder strop. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a couple of your favourite meals, Bev. Oh, well, on a non-whole food plant base, I make something that I call uh, Satan's meatballs. Ooh. So we have Satan balls, uh, which have well, you ever come across? Already. Have you ever come across a uh, YouTube channel called Connie's Rawsome? No. She was years ago when I when I first started looking into this. I started watching it, and she's got some great stuff. And you just get a, a view down. She's like this, this kind of, you know, like... Uh, in, uh, the bird's eye. Yeah, the, and, and she's got these amazing hands. She's an older woman. And right. she's kind of like Italian, kind of, you know, like here in New York, and my sister says this, and oh my God, that wasn't that from... Where the hell was that? I don't know. But she's got this real sort of Brooklyn-y kind of accent going, yeah, my daughter, and, uh, you know, and she's great. <laughs> and she makes uh, Satan's best meatballs in the world. So I like to make a massive batch of those, a big batch of meatballs, uh, and fry them, uh, not fry them, freeze them, slightly different. And then I just reheat those and cook those with some uh, passata, because I make my own passata and all that, because I am that much of a ponce. Because uh, I go to the Whole Foods market, I buy loads of stuff. So I, one of my favourite is, um, I get a shed load of, of vine tomatoes, which I've bought, you know, back of the bus type place. Roasted them in the oven, zhuzhed them all up, and cooked those meatballs in there with some uh, spaghetti on them, and it's really good. So I like doing that. What else do I like? I like I just make loads of soup, proper, thick, massive. Bottom of the fridge soup is my favourite thing. Yeah. About nine months of the year. I've got I've got a new idea for a soup. Um, Go on. Uh, sounds weird, I know. <laughs> bear, bear with it. Spicy cauliflower and peanut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know why I want to go there, Satay but I want to go there, Bev, and I want to take my bags with me. Satay soup, mate. You, you may as well just 
Put it in the bath and, and enjoy it. <laughs> oh, I must tell you as well. Oh, I, uh, I, I took your advice for frying. <laughs> oh, yeah. So this oh. is, I will use this in future uh, for frying stuff, although I am frying less. You know, I'm, yeah. Especially with stews and stuff, I'm, I'm kind of like, do you really need to use oil at the start, at the start of this or can you just steam fry? You know? Yeah, there's, I mean, it depends what you want, really, doesn't it, I think. And, and I think at the moment, my rapidly expanding waistline, I have a, you know, I say all this whole food stuff, I can drink beer till the cows come home, leave again, and then go out for work the next day. You know, I, I have, uh, my, my beer belly's called Carlsberg. My beer baby is called Carlsberg. So, you know, I'm not all uh, uh, <laughs> massively healthy, despite what I eat. But yes, that, that sounds, you know, what you do with the oil a little bit here, a little bit there. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to... I mean, it will never be out of my life, but I just want to use mm. less of it. I want to use more whole foods yeah. and less oil. Um, because I'm at the point now, I'm 50 years old, you know, I, 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 I especially now, don't have the healthiest lifestyle. Yeah. Uh, and so those little tweaks that I can make in my diet, <clears throat> get on my exercise bike, do these... It's all helpful, isn't it? It is, isn't it? And it's like, you know, it's, it's if you don't miss it, don't do it. Because, you know, one one tablespoon of any oil is 100 calories and that's a whole head of broccoli. You know, potato spud, where you go with it. Exactly. <laughs> so and, one other meal, we've got Satan's balls. Satan's balls. And um, I used to work in a tandoori, so I am a curry fiend. So the, the go-to after work one is just basically an aubergine, chickpea, spinach, mushroom, curry, just made, because I make a load of uh, curry sauce from scratch. We'll, we'll have to do a spice uh, spice kitchen thing, or uh, come and see my cellar. I've got a cellar that's full of food. <laughs> <laughs> when, when all this started, Joy said, you know, you've been, you've been bloody waiting for this for years, haven't you? Because I've got a zombie apocalypse kind of cellar with everything in it. So. <laughs> right, <laughs> But it is, I've always got, you know, dried, I've got shared loads of dried beans. Bev, why don't you, why don't you do YouTube videos? Um, because I don't think I've got much to say. And also, I am, believe it or not, I, when, when normal life is, I've got a, a full-time teaching job that is like a, I'm a, I'm not, I don't teach kids anymore, which is great, but I'm a, I'm a sort of, uh, peripatetic behaviour support teacher so I come home from work and I'm like I'm professionally nice and thoughtful and and professional for a living and I come back and it's like F and Jeff and I can't be asked and that's it and we get through the day. We eat well uh, but if I had to do anything, I only got a laptop uh, if I had to do anything at the end of the day that involved any more effort than that I think I'd just fall apart <laughs> That's a shame because obviously you're you're incredibly skilled in the kitchen. <laughs> uh, no, I mean it, it's it's I really I admire anyone who who makes most of their own stuff from scratch. I really do, and it's like I said, it's where we're kind of heading in that direction now. Um, just because it's 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 cheaper, it's better, it's you know all of the above, but. I don't know how to make a tandoori curry sauce, so I'm like, Bev, show me. Sure, you. <laughs> I, I might do a thing like that. I, I think the thing is as well, just to, just to be really important, just because, you know, I've got a full-time job, I do this. I've got no kids at home. I've got no one to look after other than the joyous one, and she can look after herself. So I'm just making food. What I don't want is, you know, people think, oh, if you're going to be vegan, you have to... Absolutely. You know, Plat your own lentils and, you know, weave your own tofu. And I like yes. making, you know, I make my own tofu. And it's it's not I'm that. Going, All you've got to do to be vegan is not eat friggin' animals. That's I'm going it. to link up there at this point in our discussion. If I do that, you see, I'll see it. I'll see it when I get to it, <laughs> when I'm speeding through. Yeah, uh, I'm going to link our shopping vlogs, which yeah. show everybody in all the major supermarkets that you can get alternative bacon sausage mincemeat burgers cheese yogurt blah 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 and you don't have to make everything from scratch but you've yeah. got to leave to old oldies 
to have a talk about making things from scratch. Exactly. But what what the one of the reasons I'm saying this because I cook everything because I come home from work and it's my chill out and it's what I do and it's my relaxation. Yeah, I love cooking. And then Joy doesn't cook because it's like my kitchen. Will you move something? And you know, she's like, "Where stuff's? I know where it is. I'm such an ox." <laughs> Leave my shit alone. She once emptied out all everything that looked out of date on the, in my spice cupboard and I nearly divorced her. Because they weren't out of date. Because I fill up the bloody jars because I've been cost me about 60 quid. Anyway, that was nice. Um, but then when she's asked about being vegan, she's like, so, you know, was it difficult? She goes, well, I'm really lucky because Bev cooks. Yeah, I think it's... And I said, don't tell them it's hard. It's not hard being vegan. It's not complicated. It's not anything. And it is, even if you just eat, not just eat, because I love Linda's stuff. If you eat your Beyond Burgers and your vegan sausages and your this and your that and your coconut cheese and your vegan KFC or whatever it is, it's not it's not your whole either though thing. It's still better for you than the stuff it replaces. It's still better for your health, even. And I'm not down and that's not to do with veganism. That's a health thing. Yeah. But it's still better it's certainly better for the bloody animals, but Absolutely. it's still better from your health for your health than eating your, your burger made from a cow's arse or down a cow's with all the saturated fat and cholesterol and the hormones and the shit that's in there. So and You know, eat. the cow wants its ass when all said and done. It's very useful. If somebody walked up to you in the street and said, I'm going to slit your throat and cut your ass off, you'd be like, um, I, I, I really don't want you to do that. I'm just going yeah. to so, you know, think about yeah. the cow. Cow in a pub. Cow <laughs> walked into a pub. Barman said, why the long face? You know, you can't do it, can you? <laughs> so Better Stop, it's getting worse. <laughs> <laughs> where, do you, where would you normally shop, Bev? Like, what's your main... If you do go to a supermarket, what would be your most regularly visited? Only because of proximity. Now, I haven't been to a supermarket since for two months at all. So for supermarket wise, I just go literally to the nearest one. So it's probably I've got a massive Tesco land near where I work. So I go to Tesco land or Morrison's. But to be honest, when I go there, I just go and get the fruit. So it doesn't matter if I want something really nice. I go to Sainsbury's because I like the. Um, oh, the. The, the butter that's like Dale Pack. The, oh, uh, naturally. Naturally. Yeah, that we, we're getting a bit low on and it's like, mm, eke it out. Um, that's so if, gorgeous if want, stuff, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's so beautiful. If, if my mum weren't already dead, I'd be selling her for it now. It's like, give it away. <laughs> I want that one. Excuse me, just come on here. Um, so, yeah, I'd, uh, I'd definitely Sainsbury's for the, if I wanted some instant stuff, if I wanted not so much ready meals, but, you know, the bacon and the all those other things i think probably sainsbury's for me where i am and i'm in sheffield um so there's a lot of variety but i think sainsbury's just tips it for for where we are as far as those go for the rest of it i just go local shopping i got the local asian uh got an international supermarket so which is how i end up buying boxes they're always, they're always gold mines for veg and spices aren't they oh yeah well, I, I have gold box, mines. you know a box of tomatoes and a box of mushrooms then i do some poncy like i dry the mushrooms and make it into mushroom powder and you know lovely in risottos but it's a hell of a lot cheaper than anything well, else yeah, oh, you can't all these skills that could be shared on youtube videos bev how to make kimchi with bev <laughs> <laughs> amazing i'd watch them all i'd watch them all and learn stuff well i'll, I'll do and then i'd rip you off and say with my idea and do a vlog i'll just i'll just <laughs> do it on you I've got I've got some miso that I need to uh, see if it's fermented in in about two months, so I'll let you know that's gone. I ferment shit and everything. It's ridiculous. Well, you actually started the thread in the uh, for those of you that are, are still watching. We've got a group attached to our Facebook page called That Vegan Group, Vegan yeah. Food Foods and Friendship. And Bev started a post in there about how to start the process to make sourdough bread. And then I got ill, so I've not updated it. So I shall do that. No, but I mean, all the main yeah. core stuff's there, isn't it? So, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and that's what's important. It's going to turn out to be a nice little group, actually. It's People a lovely sharing group, skills right? and ideas. Mm. Liking that. Uh, so, 
advice what advice or what nuggets of golden wisdom bev would you share with people who are considering veganism but are a, a little bit wary scared cautious do it it really is that simple um i get frustrated sometimes because you know there's all this idea of transitioning and there's part of me that wants to grab and scream but the other part which you know is has been a teacher for several decades and knows how things work is just to say do you know what try it and the only thing you'll regret there's one thing you'll regret which every vegan says is should have done it sooner, it sooner. and that's it there's nothing to be scared of like ridicule there's nothing to be scared of prince charming it's just plants that's all you're gonna do really that simple and, and the class need up. sauce we are just cutting out the middlemen, aren't we? Because yeah. the nutrients that we get from animals are the nutrients that they've largely got from eating plants. So it's like, why don't we just eat the plants? Yeah. Save the planet, save yourself, save the animals more than anything. Because they didn't bloody ask for it. There's no need. There is absolutely no need for it. And once that penny drops, there is no going back. Look. What am I squinting? It's John. John? Hello? Hello, I'm just filming a YouTube video with Bev. <laughs> right, okay. No, it's alright. Um, talk, talk to me for a minute, because you could be on the video too, but just in voice. Right. <laughs> Are you okay? Uh, please, you brought me down. We're absolutely out of this world. Did you enjoy it? <laughs> There's not one crew of anything left. Not one. I took my mum a portion of the shepherd's pie I did with the brown lentils down. Did you save me some, Joan? It's Bev here. Hello, lovely. Fabulous. Bev said, did you save her some? No, sorry, there's not even a crumb left. <laughs> <laughs> not, not even a crumb left, Bev. She had the right. pattern off the plate, didn't she? <laughs> Glad you enjoyed it. I'll pop down in a bit and make sure you're still alive. Bye, Bye. love. Love you. <laughs> Oh, I'll give her a big virtual oh, hug from her appropriate... Now, distance. actually, my mother's still a carnivore. She does yep. still eat meat. But I'm really surprised at that because I did a shepherd's pie last week and I used soya mints, so it mm. was really meaty. Proper meaty. Right. Uh, and I took her portion down and she loved it. And then this one, I thought, I bet she doesn't like it quite as much. So, massive bonus there. John's had brown lentils. <laughs> you might, I wouldn't hang around too much. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that strange that she phones while I'm talking to you, though? I've been shining her for an hour. Come on, John. It's... Come on, John. <laughs> She's fabulous. Yeah. And and therein lies the therein lies the the nugget. The whole thing. If John can enjoy a lentil shepherd's pie, that's a whole food, plant based one, and really enjoy it, anybody who isn't John, who is younger who is fitter, who is out. I'm not saying she's not however many years young. She's for anybody 79. else. She's pardon? 79, Bev. So, well, she's looking bloody good on that one, isn't she? She's, she's 18 June. Party on down. Uh, she loves hard. vegan food. And I'll tell you what she's really yeah. got into recently. Yeah. She started buying, of her own accord, the Richmond vegan sausages. I haven't tried those, but everybody's just said they are so like so. So then, why not do it, isn't it? She isn't prefers it? them. She said, "Well, why? Well, well, I they taste exactly the same. So why wouldn't I?" And I was like, "Go on, John." That's it. So John has the nuggets of wisdom. Everybody, she's got it. Why wouldn't you? Exactly. With all, with all the new stuff, why wouldn't you? What have you got to lose? Nothing. What have the animals got to lose? Their entire life. Exactly. It's Exactly. Again. Right, Bev, what a what a bloody great conversation. It's, totally fab, it, really enjoyed it, mate. It, it's been fabulous, really, honestly. I've, uh, it's been fabulous talking to you. I'm so glad we've had a chance to chat. I'm so glad we've made it, that it will become a vlog. Yes. Uh, I think we would have done this in the pub if, I, if we hadn't had the floods. <laughs> I think we could have spent more days in the pub. <laughs> uh give my give my massive love to the lovely joy i shall do yes and um any any closing comments before we set her on our bed and uh yeah 
I really, really love the channel. I've been on it for, you know, I think I was about your 200 subscriber. And well done, you lot, for getting over 3,000. Absolutely brilliant. I'm really enjoying watching these as well. So, uh, good, aren't they? Yeah. Five and a half thousand now, Bev. Stands back in amazement. Obviously, Five and a half now. Date there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I listen to I listen to things more than I uh, actually watch them Sundays. Yeah, but, do you know a lot? But I'm in the I'm in the kitchen. A lot of people tell me that they they put me on and do their housework and stuff because they find my voice <laughs> relaxing or inspiring. I'm like, really, <laughs> bless you, bless you all. Um, I'm I'm going to say it because you, you allowed me to say it anyway. Uh, Bev and Joy have gifted me and Jason our camp out tickets for this year. So online and face to face, Bev, thank you. You are more than welcome. Very, very much indeed. And thank you for having such a great conversation with me. I think, honestly, I think your story is so interesting to go from from that to that. You know, it's, it's just incredible. There's, there's no one to come back on it, I think. That's, and proves that's that anyone can do it. Any of us can do it. Yes. That's so fair. thank you very much, Bev. It's been thank lovely. Thank you to very talk much, Paul. All of you out there, uh, please be excellent to yourselves and each other. <coughs> and of course, the animals and the planet. Let's learn from this situation. Let's learn from each other. Bev, lots of love. And lots of love to you and Jason, too. Thank you, my darling. Bye. Bye bye.